uh, the Honourable Anne Tolley. Um, Mr Chair, I thought it would be um, appropriate if I took a call at this stage and address some of the issues that have been raised uh, in the debate to date. And I thank all members for their thoughtful um, approach to this first piece of legislation. And I, and I stress that this is the first piece of legislation to, to put in place in order for the new ministry uh, to be up and running um, on the 1st of April with some changes in place to help uh, what is going to be a programme of, I keep saying, four to five years change. I understand um, everyone's enthusiasm and perhaps impatience for those changes to happen fast, but uh, I, I stress and it will, will <coughs> indicate why I'm not going to su support the uh, SOP from Jacinda Ardern, um, that in order to make this work, we have to do it properly. Because we've tried on many, many occasions to make some quick fixes, and actually it hasn't changed the lives of those young people that are in state care. So I have said from the beginning, we're going to take this slowly and carefully, and we're going to make the changes in the, in, the, in the time and the manner that we can be assured is going to have, uh, be in the best interests of the young people who are either in state care or at risk of going into state care. So, so let's, let's take some of the issues one by one. First of all, um, the, the idea of immediately bringing into this bill uh, the 17-year-olds in the youth justice system. Uh, there are about 5,000 of them that would come from the time this bill was enacted into the youth justice system. There, are not, there is not the capability to deal with them, uh, whether it's through police, uh, youth aid, uh, whether it's through community organisations, whether it's through NGOs. There is not the capability to deal quickly and effectively with that number of extra young people. And our youth justice residences, I'm sorry, I could not stand in this house and hand on heart and say that there's about 100, maybe to 120 of those 17-year-olds um, who, who, who are quite serious offenders, that our youth justice residences could cope with that number in, 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 you know, from the date of the time that this legislation comes into being. So, so that's right. So, so this, as I've said before, the youth justice age is under consideration by Cabinet. Um, it is under careful consideration as to how that might be uh, uh, phased in, if at all, and no decisions have been made at this stage. And to just plonk a, an SOP down and say from the time this bill is enacted uh, that that's going to happen is, uh, is headline-making. And it might make people feel good, but I can tell you it will not have the effect for those 17-year-olds that the genuine, the genuine uh, mood of this House wants to achieve. So that's the first thing. Uh, and, I, and I make the point that we are extending that age of care quite carefully. So the, this, is, this bill represents that first change up to 18. Um, to so 18th birthday, so we, we believe that we can manage that effectively, but beyond that, we've already signalled we want to uh, create that right to remain in care up to 21, and that will be phased in. That's in the second piece of legislation, and we'll show some, some uh, indication of when that will be phased in, when we believe we are capable of providing the sort of support that these young people need. It is no point in legislating for stuff that we cannot deliver. And it's not just a question of money, it's a question of capability, and it's a question of effectiveness, because we have a system in place now that is not delivering. We have got to change that, and we've got to change it from the ground up. So quick headlines are not going to change those kids' lives. Secondly, um, I want to deal with the issue of uh, publishing the young people's views. Look, I, I understand that the desire to see that this is truly happening. I, I, I genuinely understand that. And all I can say is this bill is not the appropriate one to do that in. The next bill is the appropriate one to show how those young people's views uh, are in place when we have that much broader piece of legislation that shows 
what those major changes are going to be. And if you, if you want to, Mr. Honourable Chair, and Tommy. Mr. Chair, if you want to get an idea of that, I have already made available. I think it's four, possibly five, cabinet papers that show the sorts of changes we are proposing to make in that second piece of legislation. And, and I hope to have that in the House by the end of the year. And I'm happy to provide full briefings to anyone uh, who wants it on that legislation. The third point in the, in the SOP is around the point that the previous speaker talked about. And, and I do accept it is hard to understand why you would make a change like that without that broader uh, aspect of how it's going to work actually in practice. So let, let me assure you that I haven't made proposed that change lightly. The government isn't proposing that change lightly. We do understand that it is a significant change. First of all, research, evidence and overseas experience and actually our own social workers themselves know too many more of these young children today are presenting with higher and more complex issues that cannot be solved by social workers alone. We need that multidisciplinary, um, many professionals sitting around uh, working together to help children and the young families, um, and, and young people and their families. So, so to give some um, examples of what might be possible by, by making that change, for instance, we are talking with a large number, and Child, Youth and Family already have, I think, six contracts with iwi who are taking more, wanting to take and are taking more and more responsibility about dealing with their tamariki. I can see that there would come, um, be the possibility of working uh, with, a, with capable iwi who have the capacity in order uh, to, to actually put into practice that, uh, pro that process themselves that could be delegated to appropriately qualified people within an iwi to work with their tamariki. Now, that, that is a possibility. There is also the, um, the uh, um, a possibility of working with some of our very well uh, qualified NGO providers who have qualified social workers themselves uh, who, who may, we may want to contract with to um, perform some of those issues themselves. And again, as I say, we might have a multidisciplinary team uh, where we have paediatricians, where we have child psychologists, um, hospital social workers, etc., all working together, and one of them might make the application. So that's the sort of thinking behind this change, and, and we've tried to put in some, and the committee, in fact, have, have uh, strengthened some of the oversight around that. All of that has to be published uh, in a way that the public can access so they can see who these people are that they ha are having these delegated powers to. Um, so, so I do appreciate that some of this is quite high level ahead of the um, operating practices and that does make it difficult and those are the right questions for people to be asking. Um, so Mr Speaker, as I say, uh, I, think, I think that the uh, Select Committee have done a good job in, in, in this bill. It is the first bill uh, with just a few changes, the major legislative change uh, that we are proposing, I'm hoping to have in the House by the end of the year. But I do thank the Select Committee and the members in the House for their attention to you know, these kids that really need major changes to the way the state takes responsibility for their lives to ensure that they can live full lives. I call up, uh,